Hello and welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. This is Tom Scholey. Today we're going to look at Steve Ditko drawing Batman. Kind of a unique comic in comics history. But first, Tom, where should people look for more of your work? Um, go to your finer comics retailers and check out Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics. It's the life story of Jack Kirby told in, in comic book form. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Tom Scholey. You can check out my Patreon. Just search Tom Scholey at patreon.com. And you can watch my YouTube show, Total Recall Show. Ed, tell us about Red Room. Red Room Comics in the wild. Murder on the dark web for fun and profit is the name of the game in the Red Room universe. As of June 30th, two issues of Red Room have hit the streets in a paper edition with new comics coming out about every four weeks. As you can see, it's a family comic. <laughs> uh, you can read the comics ahead of time on my Patreon, patreon.com slash edpiscor. I'm into the fifth issue of Red Room Comics uh, on uh, the sneak preview Patreon. I put up new strips every Tuesday. Three bucks for the archive there. You can uh, get, you can order, pre-order the comics uh, by way of links in my link tree, and you can get to the Patreon there as well. You can join me on patreon.com slash jimrug, where you can download my out-of-print, hard-to-find zines and mini-comics, like this collection of ballpoint pen drawings. You can see a lot of my original art and how I make comics. And my most recent post, Red Room uh, Cover 3 variant. <laughs> an homage to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So all of that and a lot more at patreon.com slash jimrug. But we are here today to look at Man Bat, issue number one. How did we find out about this one, guys? Covered by Jim Aparo. Well, I mean, we were at the um, at Heroes Con, and we were at like the sort of pre-show dinner. Let, let's, 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 okay. let's, let's set it up just a touch. Okay, because good. before that, din- before Heroes Con, there was uh, an SPX where Gilbert and Jaime Hernandez were there, and nobody was talking to them. Everybody was scared to talk to the Hernandez <laughs> brothers, except us, <laughs> you know? So we were bullshit with them, got to know them a little bit, and that primed the pump for the Heroes Con deal. Continue. Yeah, so so it was, you know, one of those, like, long tables, a ton of people all, you know, sitting around, people at various spots, and just, you know, shooting the shit about comics. And, like, uh, like Jaime, he's very soft-spoken, and he was just kind of like, you know, there, there was, uh, I always thought, <laughs> I always thought Steve Ditko uh, did a great Batman. And we were like, what? <laughs> what? There's a Steve Ditko, but t- you know, like, you know, everybody's jaws dropped and like, t- I don't like, does that exist? Is it? He's like, yeah, I'm trying to remember what issue, you know, and, and then he, like, he, he didn't know quite what issue, or maybe he did, I, but the next day, that's all we were looking for. <laughs> Was this, you know, Batman and like asking dealers, you got the, the Steve Ditko Batman, huh? What what do you th- what issue is it? I don't know, I think it's like maybe um annual or it's a man bat or it's maybe the- and then uh you know, like I d I don't know if you guys got a- I got a hold of this. He 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 came up to us and was like did that thing, like with the pointy finger, it was man bat one. And then we <laughs> and then we all dispersed, left our tables. Yeah. Hey Chris Pitzer, man, watch our stuff real quick, dude. We all <laughs> ran around, man. All probably came back around the same time and like synchronized swatches. Parker Lewis goes, <laughs> throw down your copy and then that one. You got it. <laughs> Wasn't a hard comic to find then either. Uh, not not an expensive item at the time. Uh, who knows now? Might yeah. be a little bit tougher. And, and after this video, of course. Uh, and uh, the because co- it's unassuming. Who's looking for Man Bat? Who's looking for it's Man Bat Jim Aparo cover? Nice cover, but it's not. You know, you don't know that there's you know Steve Ditko uh, Batman in here. And and it is. I mean, it's written by Jerry Conway. Drawn by Steve Ditko, this is a de facto Marvel comic in its presentation and everything. It's a, it's a Steve Ditko Marvel comic down to this barren time <laughs> who, whose, whose name is Clement. You know, like, <laughs> what the fuck? And my, one of my favorite pieces of this thing is the little grace note at the end of all of Man Bat's sentences. It's like, screak! <laughs> screak! <laughs> It happens in serious conversation too, like it as does. you get through. It, it stands out so much. It's, For a while, when I first read this, I was like, is that somebody's name? <laughs> the way it kept falling, it just didn't seem right. And then but great Ditko art, like on every page. It's Chekhov's screak because you don't you don't sell <laughs> the screak on page one if it doesn't pay off at the very end. <laughs> and it becomes it becomes the uh the the weapon of choice. But uh very soon we're going to be getting to to that Batman, and it's a great Batman. It's 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 a very purposeful approach, man, and it's all about keeping Batman in shadow. Yeah, 
There's a there's man bat and woman bat. His his wife is the problem in this issue. So yeah, here he is. And his first appearance might be the only time you see the flesh of his face. Well, yeah, it is interesting the way it proceeds because, like you said, you see his flesh in the first appearance. And then he goes into the shadows. Yeah. And he like, yeah, like, this is where he's closest to being mortal. Like, this is, he hasn't left home yet. One of those... Look at this panel. The, the caption is, still confused? While you check the feature page at the end of the issue for more info about Man Bat, we'll turn to another cast member, the Batman. And this panel feels like there's space here for your caption at the top. Right. I think Conway is the one who's confused by this story because several <laughs> times throughout here, he writes things to this effect. Mm-hmm. It's an instructive uh, series of pages because this is a night sequence and you never see black sky. Always up for the colorist to, to take care of that part. It's a good point. It's kind of like, you know, don't color your skies blue. Mm-hmm. Right. Don't color your night skies black. So look, where'd Batman's face go? Like, <laughs> like I I can't say I've ever seen that before. That's what I'm saying, yeah. He's a creature of the night. He He invents a visual language for Batman that is like so effective so beautiful and so unique and perfect for Batman. So Ditko, but also like so Batman. And then, you know, smarter guys, like guys who are more ahead of the curve, did employ this. Like, I see like the next guy to pick up on this thread would probably be Todd McFarlane in Batman Year Two is like the next time you see people coming at Batman from this from this angle. Yeah, I start to think about uh the uh Norman Osborne, Green Goblin stuff, like like when they would conveniently cover his face a bunch mm-hmm. in, in the in the Spider-Man comics and things. Yeah, look at this. Look at this. And I'm going to go out on a limb, and that first panel where Batman has no eyes, I think maybe when they reprinted this, he actually did have eyes, they but they filled gimmicks. in. They just filled uh, in, like, like like in the in the printing here. But but uh, I may be wrong. But here he's definitely got no eyes. <laughs> this stuff is, gets so goofy. It's like, it's like, it's almost Elf Quest or something. <laughs> but look at, like, who else was doing that? Like, like it, at this point, at this period, like it wouldn't have been like maybe till like the eighties that you'd, you'd see that, you know, like just, he's, he's just coming up with like all Abi- these visual solutions. Abiding by that, like six panel grid, you know, the Ditko six panel grid. Uh, I, I can hazard a guess that this is a Marvel method plot based story where Conway's mm-hmm. gave Steve Ditko a couple sentences and then it's just like, go run wild, go, go, do, go do your thing. I'd be curious to hear like Dan Clowes weigh in on this issue as a, as a DC guy, you know, like you see the sweating characters, it feels like this would be almost perfect for him. A a fan of Ditko, Mm -hmm. a fan of DC. This seems like it should check boxes off for him. Uh, But some of these little Ditko isms that you see in his work, I see throughout this story and and the Mm -hmm. sweating, that sweating giant eyeballs is a pretty good one. I also like the, uh, the motif of these like sonar, it feels like the Doctor Strange stuff. It's it's applied yeah. differently, but it's still that, like, how do you draw these abstract things? How do I represent sonar visually? Yeah, Ditko's a, just a great guy for that. And the panels are so simple, a lot of them, but read perfect. Like, that, it's it's mm-hmm. two silhouettes. It's your sonar circles, and it's the man-bat silhouette just colored in blue. It looks great. Here's the origin of Devil Dinosaur. <laughs> Man, it's so Devil Dinosaur. So, so Devil Dinosaur. <laughs> Cuber with the center spread in the uh, in the Ditko Batman. Man, I, like I I can't get enough of this Ditko Batman, and it is it's like a delicacy. There's only a little bit of it in the comic, and you never get it again from Ditko, you know, anywhere else. It's a good way to treat Batman, I think, in in a, in a Batman. St- in most of these superhero stories, I always think like the superhero. Often, especially somebody who has twelve thousand appearances, they're better off as a supporting character. Because it's not like Batman's going to grow or evolve. It's just not, he's not a main character. He's this thing that's like gravity or something that's part of this world. That was Tim Burton's attitude towards Batman. He said people complained there wasn't enough Batman in his movies. And he said there's just enough Batman. In as his long movies. as you hate Batman, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and look, now, so he started out as, as a creature of flesh, a human being. We saw a little bit of him. And now he's been this in, invincible Batman has been this invincible creature of the night and now he's vulnerable again. And so that's the exact moment we see his flesh again. That's really a good note because even when he's tiny here, you still see his flesh. Like it's a very conscious decision from by, by Ditko, uh, presumably. Or an unconscious decision that's spot on and brilliant. You know, these guys who work from the gut. That's true. Read the uh, Chris Ware monograph <laughs> <laughs> and you can see that he was, he probably had this issue too and cut this out to get that costume. <laughs> 
And now Batman's back in control, so he's back as, you know... Full-on silhouette. Mm -hmm. The most control and the, and the least human that you're going to see Batman in this issue. Screech! Hypnotizing her. There's some flesh here, but that's not necessarily uh, implied by Ditko. That line, yeah. you know, could be implying that, that, or it could be like a crease in his cheek. Yeah, co colorist. Uh, that's a colorist choice. Mm -hmm. That's the colorist trying to put some human Batman on the page. <laughs> now let's take this back to Doctor Strange territory. Because <laughs> yeah. Clementine has to get what's coming to him. Payback. Look at that, like, demon mm -hmm. form. And after this, there's like another issue that, you know, caps up this, you know, sums up the story, but uh, no Batman in, in the next issue. And Ditko draws it? Ditko, yeah. That weird era, like I sort of like the impulse uh, of the of the company to, to, to give, to have villain comics, you know, because there's a couple issues of Joker and stuff. They, they never really did anything, but I like the idea yeah. of spending a lot of time with a villain and and, and getting into, uh, I don't know, their day-to-day -day or something, man. Like, where did, what the is, mundane stuff's the best part of Joker all this character. for lunch? <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> it's the 70s. It's the era of the anti-hero and, you know. The uh, world's greatest screen tone. There it is, man. <laughs> you think that's something... Mil Milgram's applying that, right? Yeah, that's that's always up to the anchor. Yeah, I'd love to see like it's the pretty unique Ditko choice. original. Because it's like, that's the only screen in this uh, mm -hmm. that we see in this issue. Well, I guess Whoops. Yeah. two of them. That's a pretty neat one. That's the yeah. same kind of circular screen, but a much finer detail, and then worked on, I assume, with white. I love how heavy-handed that is. So Ditko doing Batman. Uh, the only time? I think, I believe so. The only time, you know, unless maybe he did some, like, T-shirt or, you know, cereal box or, some, you know, some odd thing. But, yeah, the only comic, un unless, uh, you know, you could talk to Jaime, maybe, you know, he's figured found something there's else. never there, like every time i've ever like gone comic digging with jaime sat around talking uh comics with him in some way there are always gems man there are always gems to hunt for it's why uh i feel safe with cartoonist kayfabe like we're not going to run out of comics to look <laughs> yeah, at right. anytime <laughs> soon Call Jaime when we start getting low on our supply of comics. That's goddamn yeah, right. Job yeah. security. And you know what, man? He's he's old school and he's analog. So like when we were at WonderCon searching for stuff, he's he's grabbing on his pockets and stuff, and he pulls out the the notebook paper that's that's no way. that's folded up that's awesome. in, in a thousand little squares, man, and is like you know unrolls it and is going through the long boxes, man, looking through shit. So that just lets you know, dude, the sickness never goes away. <laughs> Hopefully. I don't know if that's reassuring or not, but uh, that's <laughs> don't, awesome. Don't, don't tell your wife. M many thanks to, uh, to Jaime for pointing this out, putting us on the trail of this one. Goddamn right. It's, uh, like I said, it wasn't hard for us to find it. It helped yeah. that we were at Heroes Con. It's hiding in plain sight. But just no knowledge of it, mm -hmm. you know? It's, it's uh, G.I. Joe, knowing's half the battle. Gotta, gotta look to your comics elder sometimes, man. You don't know what you don't know, and uh, knowing is half the battle. Exactly. Ready to get out of here, fellas? Yes. Yeah. Favors, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell. We'll notify you when new vids are available. Jimmy, what's out there? Patreon.com slash Jim Rugg, where you can download my out-of-print zines and mini-comics. You can see lots of my original art, including the original art, sketches, and process for the Red Room number three Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles variant. So, Patreon.com slash Jim Rugg. Tom. Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics, in stores now. Uh, at Patreon.com, search Tom Scholey. Check out the Total Recall show. Follow me on Twitter at Tom Scholey. Red Room Comics out in the wild. Murder on the Dork Web for fun and profit. Uh, as of June 30th, uh, two issues are printed and published on paper. Uh, Going to be coming out every four weeks. Murder on the Dork Web for fun and profit, like I said, is the name of the game. And you could pre order, pre-order those comics at the Fantagraphics website. You could read the comics ahead of time. I have about five issues. I'm into the fifth issue. Uh, on my Patreon, three bucks gets you the archive there. That's well over a hundred pages, and you can get to links to all this stuff in my link tree in the description below this video. You can subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. Jamie, give them one last set of merchandise, man. We're going to be on our way. Read more comics. <laughs>